Welcome to Uninformed Summary, a podcast where four friends come together to discuss a topic that had an impact on history. Nailed it! Tonight, in the hot seat, it's Vinny. Hi, I'm Vinny, in the hot seat. Hey, I'm Molly, and I'm next in line. Wee 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 wee. Yeah, do a do a UFO noise. Okay, everybody, do a UFO noise. So after research uh, levels, after Molly, Scott, who um, I think is an alien. Bop bop be bop bop be bop bop. That has a funny story attached to it, which I plan on telling tonight. Oh, tasty appetizer. And um, tonight, uh, very much deserving the Dunstead, not having to do any research, just here to hang out, talk shop on UFOs, is Matt. And I'm not making an alien noise because I'm a skeptic. (laughs) Well, the thing is, it's the topic is about UFOs, not aliens. Oh, God. Which is fair. Yeah, which is fair. That's true. Tonight we are talking about UFOs and... Pew, 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 pew. (laughs) <laughs> the yeah, the careful distinction should be made right up top. UFOs are not aliens, are not UFOs, and we'll kind of get to that later. There's a there's a lot of this crossover in the subject, but I'm here to talk to you about unidentified flying objects, UFOs, and I want to just like get this cracking with some quick group questions. We know UFO, we know that acronym, so this is going to be an acronym heavy episode. Um, what do you guys know about other acronyms for unidentified flying objects? Just chat them out. You know them. CNN. <laughs> okay. I don't understand the question. Is it no. like UAF or? Yeah, there's there's been UAF. UAP is the new designation. So you're going to hear that come up. Unidentified aerial phenomenon. Yep. Absolutely. And um, I think that since we're squarely rooted in 2021, we should start there and we're going to kind of work our way back um, over um, a couple major encounters with UFOs and then how that ties into the aliens uh, or not aliens. Um, And then we'll move our way into like, what are we like, what are we doing now to continue our research? But let's start it off with the most recent. There was a pretty hot lick that came out recently from the uh government <laughs> yeah no those is that, guys is that, are definitely... is that a reputable news source ah, it depends on where you land but the they Rob definitely Wolf? put out some information they put out some information on june 25th 2021 about these uaps the unidentified aerial phenomenon they had a task force set up the uap tf okay come out they come out with a report rather um, with some conclusions about these uh, sightings in the field, right? What do you guys think when you see, mind's eye, close your eyes, a UFO appears? What does it look like? Like a light in the sky, and it's like moving real weird. Moving real weird, okay. I'm trying to find a picture of something that looks like the UFO that I saw back in Ohio. It had angular edges it was in like it was it was day there were no lights but it had these corners on it it kind of looked like a like a lightning bolt like if you were looking at it it had the jagged lines of like a lightning bolt but it wasn't like long or anything like that it was just this big metal looking thing that was just sitting there yeah okay um right. for me you mean the you got the stereotypical flying saucer uh you have the multi mega mega ship uh multiple white lights in a circular or oval type pattern yep spreading over a massive kind size. of idea yeah uh and then uh i mean with uh, unfortunately uh I, I may have looked at a few of the Pentagon documents. So now it, I would also say it looks like aspirin. <laughs> well, like, yeah, uh, there's a cylinders or there's a pill, Tic Tac, right? All yeah, these different like, cute associative names come up and it's like, okay, so let's, let's stop a second. We're using terminology like Tic Tac, cylinder, rod. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. Disc. Oh, no, <laughs> what have I done? Um, 
disc and uh you know this giant strange it looked like a lightning bolt so we're we should be cautious as we move through here uh that there's a lot of that going on in in the claims that aliens are driving these unidentified objects um so pointed to the U, the UFO report, or rather the UAP report, there's 144 instances that they sort of break down um, using multiple sensors which detect unidentified aerial phenomenon largely around military bases in the 2021 report. And they constant, concentrate, excuse me, on these um, incidences between 2004 and 2021. And the majority of what they study came... Uh, from 2020, uh, 2019 rather to 2021, right? So they're they're trying to put out a report to the public that says we're going to give you everything we got, and they have some pretty crazy stuff to tell you. And the conclusions, which are pretty divided, some closing thoughts emerge from this report that again came out in June of this year. Um, here's a quote direct: "Quote UAP probably lack a single explanation." End quote. So it's a pretty good conclusion. I feel like I've learned a lot. Yeah, there <laughs> it's one of many, right? And that's more of a header in the paper that they go on to detail, but they so explain further it, that it's not it. They just don't have like one unified explanation of what could be these phenomena. Some some of them are sensors that they claim are malfunctioning. Some of them are direct, you know, like remember the the big buzz that came out about the videos? Pentagon released these videos. Like, well, they're not denying that. They're just simply saying, uh, we don't know. Hmm. Yeah. It doesn't seem that conclusive, but it also doesn't seem to be identified with high confidence, right? That's what they're saying, at least. So you kind of have to take that at face value if you're going to. There's pilot accounts that might swear that these objects were, because they were behaving in such a way that was so hard to understand that they had to be alien that's not proof right that's just a really it can be a pretty dangerous leap of logic to assume that so the report goes on but um they do establish this idea in the report which i think i agree with uap threaten flight safety and possibly national security i think that's a another fair conclusion because if everyone has to go, what the hell is that thing? Um, and no one's ever seen it before. You don't know if it's here to hurt you or if it's just a tool or maybe a enemy military aircraft, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, What's all and, the... And on the bright side is, is that, I mean, other countries that invest in defense, they are not at all. And I, I, would, I think we all agree here. Definitely, they're not innovating. So... We've seen everything they're ever going to do. <laughs> so, aliens, right? Is that what I'm... For sure. Yeah, I think you have to rest in a position where you're pretty comfortable with, with your um, limits of the human mind to say, like, another human could not have built the technology that I'm seeing right now. But there's also some pretty wild stuff that makes claiming extraterrestrial design a little easier. We're going to get to that, though. Um, Especially like the speeds in which the like the tic tac being like the big one. Yes, the speed at which that is traveling currently uh, does not seem feasible. The videos make it seem as though the best military technology we have for targeting computer uh, assisted targeting and all this stuff can't touch it, can't track it, and uh, they also the pilots in those videos are like, "Oh my god, that thing just went into the ocean." So I, I'm not sure what they're seeing, but it also sounds to me like they're not sure what they're seeing. Right. Right. So that's kind of one thing I wanted to head this episode off with. Right now, 2021, <laughs> the biggest, baddest military in the world goes, I, I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> well, like big, bad military, but also NASA. Yeah, NASA like, said he hasn't found one yet. Seeing stuff in space, but having like saying that, oh yeah, I, I got it. I snapped a photo with my with the camera out in space. You know, your space camera. Well, yeah, these telescopes. Made for space, right? Yeah. 
but there's like no evidence of it on the photographs and like <laughs> well obviously all the all aliens the... are hiding i didn't say aliens i just said ufos <laughs> see we're yeah. doing it again you need, you need to make that distinction you know damn it but like all that scientific shit and you can't record sightings that are out in space well uh, yeah see that's yeah. the thing is this evidence or absence of evidence sorry scott Oh, no, I was just going to say that's exactly kind of the point is, is almost all examples that we point to when it comes to um, conflating the difference between UFO and, you know, uh, extraterrestrial seems to be exclusively to near inside atmosphere objects. You know, we're not seeing these things out in the orbit or, you know, and that kind of thing around the Earth. It's almost always close enough for our military to, to notice it, correct? Or am I incorrect there? Not not entirely. There's one subject we're going to talk about later, which is a, a giant space anomaly that happened in 2017 and then 2019. Okay. There were some interesting flight patterns like observed uh, our first, uh, quote, known interstellar object entered our space in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. We'll touch on that, but not entirely wrong, right? But I think you're saying, Scott, is... We had to use the tools at hand to observe what we could, how we could. Not saying that there isn't, like, recorded evidence of UFOs out in space, because there has been, but who's to say that it wasn't tampered with or, no. Are you suggesting <laughs> that the government would hold that back? I said no such thing. Okay. I just want to be clear. You can cut the secret tension with a knife. <laughs> Who, which one of you is the spook, huh? <laughs> Next time on Uninformed Summary. It's just a I'm Mexican not. standoff and we're all just like, <laughs> <laughs> shoot, him, shoot me, I'm the alien. No, wait, no, I'm not the alien. <laughs> I'm, I'm mostly enjoying Matt's silence. It speaks volumes. <laughs> You guys <laughs> just wait until we get into okay, so the the stories that we have now, the the sightings rather. I don't want to call them stories because people have documented them, taken time, they're they're called sightings. And we have UFologists, which is an unidentified flyingologist, and they <laughs> are serious people there's a guy out there that a lot of people are going to start to say well what about Vinny? you don't think aliens are real? what about zechariah sitchin what about these guys who claim uh to understand it from ancient knowledge so that's exactly what i'm going to talk about next which is aliens or ufos sightings in the before time times that to us seem so far away because they are i mean 3000 bc pretty Far away. You guys okay starting there? I'm gonna say I don't. I don't have a whole lot of my my knowledge of history starts at 1776. So. Oh well, that's all that mattered, right? Yeah. All right. So Hamilton came. It's the second coming of Christ. So please continue. God, you and Hamilton. Oh, I'm gonna just. I'm gonna try and convince you Hamilton's an alien. <laughs> Goodbye, it's you Hamilton. Honest. Anyway, UFOs. <laughs> UFOs. 3000 BC is the sort of dated, agreeable timeline of the Sumerian tablets. You guys ever heard of these? Molly's yes. nodding. Has anyone else ever heard of the Sumerian tablet? Yeah, it's one of the first earliest recorded human uh, written records, right? Yep, it is one of the earliest written records. And the cuneiform language seems to be one of our uh, first written languages. So pretty big deal. Uh, that it happens to mention aliens in the stories. So you have two major stories that were cuneiformed out here, belonging to uh, the library of Sumerian king Ashurbanipal. And we're going to talk about the Epic of Creation in Sumer origin stories and the Epic of Gilgamesh, who was like Sumeria's Jesus. Or Noah. I, it's hard for me. I tried to like make equations, but... Both of these stories mention beings from the heavens arriving in 
we'll call them suspect sky carriages or having anomalous features like bodies that are not of this world, right? Technology, maybe, that's described through the Sumerian tablets. A capability that these extraterrestrial beings sort of had that was supernatural. Does this shit not sound like aliens to you? Or angels. Angels, right? Either way, they're not from this world. Check. Right. Okay. And they have advanced levels of technology. Check. And they were in, what were they in when they came? Sky carriage. Which were not identified. Unidentified flying objects. Oh shit, aliens exist because <gasps> of the Sumerian tablets. Says guys like Zech- Zechariah Sitchin and some other people, but I have news about him, and this is unfortunate because it's going to throw shade, but he is not the respected academic scientist that you might uh, hear people say or think or, you know, the the subscription to a theory such as proof of aliens through uh, this old stuff lacks evidence. What's up, Scott? Okay, cool. Now I have to cancel my fucking Amazon order of red yarn. (laughs) And I don't know if they're going to refund it now. My Charlie Day cosplay is ruined. <laughs> no, it sucks. Uh, it sucks, but we'll make use of the red yarn. There's plenty of, there's plenty of conspiracy here, Scott. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> um, so about these tablets, right? Beings from the stars and nearby planets, particularly what they called Nibiru in the story, which um, scholars and, and translators think is Jupiter. Uh, the the planet observable now as Jupiter. They call it Nibiru. Um, the beings came from there in the story of Gilgamesh. And these were like gods. Unlikely. I mean, <laughs> it's on the clay. How can you say it's... <laughs> what are you, you going to do? It's in the clay. What, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And so it goes on and says, these beings, okay, now hitherto understood as Anunnaki, and they have some other names, but you might hear that name, Anunnaki, for aliens comes from this tablet, a series of tablets. And the Anunnaki did this crazy thing, according to the tablets, where they made humans on Earth by splicing the DNA of animals and themselves. And then after that was done, they gave humans dominion over the Earth so they could work on behalf of the aliens. Stop me when this starts to sound like a story you know. (laughs) Well, partially I have to stop because I have to imagine. So I want you to imagine, right, where where you're working or you're doing something uh, in terms of a job. And uh, and maybe uh, you go to your boss and you're like, so I have an idea. What if we go to remember that planet with the space cows? What if we go to the space cow planet? Right. We just merge with them. Build them a few pyramids and then just buck out. Just we're done. See what happens. Like, fuck it. I, I think that there should be a, an advanced uh, alien race. I, they need to hire some HR people. Uh, some, you know, ethics. That sounds sketch. If you go to the right YouTube videos, you can, you can find the, where the alien people are now. Lizard people. <laughs> the the VH1, where, where they are now. The Anunnaki. <laughs> Where are they? Pop up alien. That'd be a good one. <laughs> got little pop up um, packs. Dude, you got a good idea going there because here's the thing about all these like accounts of because they're they're biblical in nature for the Sumerians. This is an ancient ancient Mesopotamian civilization. It's modern day Iraq, Iraq, Mosul, uh, in that area of northern Iraq, and it's like the Garden of Eden right that as we refer to it in other stories and the big beings came down and made people in this garden and then said now you run the place and you serve me now and that's the that's a very brutally chopped up horrible version of these sumerian tablets but it, I'm, the only reason i'm taking us all the way here is because beings from outer space made people and flew in ufo's we're going to see that as we go on, because uh, that wasn't the, the last origin story that had UFOs in it, right? Do you guys know any others? 
Egyptians. I hear Egyptians going once. Going twice. Ding, ding, ding. Right? You have a similar conflation between, like, astronomical anomalies, mathematical uh, fascinations, and the Giza Pyramid, for instance. Giza Pyramid is definitely one of those other conflations where we have, like, okay, a story of unexplained mysteries combined with astronomical uh, wonders, right? The pyramid's an amazing thing. It helps you track time from what we've been able to decipher. It supposedly was like a monument, uh, and others were monuments to the amazing abilities of the cultures of their time. They were built with, here's some stats on the Giza pyramid, okay? This, like, this is what, the, sh the shit that makes people think aliens, could, only them could do this. Two and a half million stones. Some of them were 70 tons apiece. The quarry was 500 miles away, where they got them from, in some, in some cases. You gonna tell me that a bunch of Egyptians moved these ancient Egyptians with bronze chisels, right? That's the, that's the idea. And frankly, guys, sort of like that Pentagon report. <laughs> well, everyone's like, well, we don't, we don't know how they did it. So what are you going to do? They did it, though. Somebody figured it out. Exactly. Yeah, it makes you go, hmm. Well, my other issue is, is um, see, so I kind of fit in the middle place between Matt and you here uh, in terms of my kind of personal thoughts on aliens. I will say, in my experience, um, in like, vehicle uh, manufacturing and that kind of thing. Stone is not a great, it's not a great material for uh, vessels. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know that. It's a bit oh, you heavy. You make a bunch of vehicles out of stone? No, I try not to exclusively. Go um, with what you have, I guess. So, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, and it also kind of goes back to, you know, the quote by Neil deGrasse Tyson, which I think that you can kind of fit in uh, in a different context here, is it, if, if, if the unknowable, like, just because something is unknown doesn't necessarily mean that it's entirely attributed to, like, I think his quote was, if, if, if God fills up the spot of the unknown information we have about the universe, then that, that, that the God is becoming ever more smaller as we learn, you know? Uh, and so with, with that same thing, it's like, I, I don't know if the, I, first, it's not a spaceship. That's, that would be really, that's heavy. I've got more, but I, please, I can't wait to talk further. But tell me <laughs> Sorry. I, no, don't worry. I've got an ace up my sleeve for this. this is oh, okay. 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 So it's not uh, a spaceship, but. But. Ooh, is it a beacon? Is it how they keep the monsters away in Minecraft? I don't know. I'm, I'm really <laughs> Anybody want to take a guess about how the pyramids do aliens? I would say Scott was pretty close with the beacon. Essentially. Oh, I don't even understand the question anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What were, what were the, the pyramids? The pyramids are related in a lot of ways. They're, they're burial to tombs, right? Yeah, they're yes, ostensibly because history has helped us piece this together. Uh, there are burial know. tombs in them for sure. There like, are burial maybe that, tombs. Well, in maybe that's in all they were. Them. Okay, yeah, yeah. Accounts would say that in Giza, the strange thing was that none of the um, sarcophagi had bodies in them. But I want to tell you guys about grave robbers, right? Who exist. Um, but the alien theories, let's get back to that because the pyramids are not spaceships, Scott, but they are, get this, capable of generating a hyperspace force field so strong that it warps reality around it and transports the same pyramid to a subsequently predestined position on another planet once it folds back out of hyperspace, you just have to stop rotating the pyramid at a certain frequency. Have I lost any of you yet? Yeah. I think I'm having an aneurysm. Yeah. Joe Parr. I mean, I, I did the thing I do when I watch Star Trek, when I hear the start of the Technobabble sentence. I stop, <laughs> and I, and I stop listening until there's a pause. And then the other character says, so it's like trying to put a piece of butter 
through a sieve. And they're like, yes, just like that. Yeah. Yeah, this is, there's a gentleman, <laughs> you're right, Matt, there's a gentleman named Joe Parr, he's an electronics engineer, and in the 1970s, he goes to Giza Pyramid, and he's like, no, I'm going to prove it, there's, a, there's some crazy shit going on here, I'm going to figure it out, and he releases a bunch of studies after sinking like $60,000 into it, and in 1970s, that's, I trillions now, in today's yeah. money. Yeah, uh, that, yeah it's tracks. Bitcoin. Yeah, 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 <laughs> he should have done Bitcoin. <laughs> he would have been great. Anyway, so he, he derives this idea that hyperspace is achievable, meaning that the pyramid was so mathematically perfect that if you measured it with these different sensors and tools, you could, you know, reverse engineer how to time travel. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying so hard. He thought he could travel through time and space. You can. And or... he thought he thought he thought that that's why these things were built, not just that you could like twist them into some crazy new use. He's like, this is why these were built. But I'm having Futurama flashbacks. Incomplete <laughs> study, guys. This is not a complete study, right? Because Giza, as cool as it is, is one of many, so many, so many pyramids built in similar fashion at, across like carbon dating, time matching periods. So. They're in, in Italy, many different locations, yeah. Mexico, yeah, China. Yeah. The United States has uh, the burial mounds, which people mm -hmm. attribute to you know South America, Indonesia, France, Turkey. The Canary Islands have ziggurat-like pyramids. So it's really impossible to do this hyperspace theory and say that for sure we have you you know alien life or have been visited by aliens flying in UFOs to come down and build these. It just doesn't stack up against observable science. That's why we don't have like the Joe Parr Institute of Pyramid Flying right now, because those <laughs> studies were pretty fruitless. And, and many of them, and in, in like that study, kind of don't end up um, changing the facts that we just don't know. Back to that Pentagon report. Well, we don't know. I mean, the pyramid's pretty cool. But we don't really know how it got there. We just have to kind of decode what we can. And um, the fact remains that we cannot rebuild it with the known tools and technology of the time. So we have to balance that, right? That's pretty wild. Can we give that up to the skept to like the the people who believe? I want to be like, yeah, we don't know how to do it. I agree, but that doesn't freaking mean aliens did it, right? Yeah, like I I, I have no idea. Like accepting that there are things that we don't understand. Like there are theories about how we might have built the pyramids, but like. None of them are like 100% satisfying and seem right. So like, I definitely acknowledge that there's like weird shit that we can't explain. But then like, I don't, I don't, I can't get on board for the leap to aliens. <laughs> like, we don't know. So aliens, right? And this was okay. So people put Giza pyramid. We're doing timelines, right? We did Sumeria, 3000 BC. Well, coincidentally, and it's kind of tidy in the archaeological scientific world. But I, I don't know. But like the Giza pyramids are dated in a range around the same time. And that helps people's theory of a uh, uh, wider connection. People may be being visited at the same time by, by these otherworldly beings. Who, by the way, guys, Egypt had an otherworldly being visit them, according to their stories, called Thoth. And Thoth gave the royalty the knowledge of how to build the pyramids and supposedly what they were supposed to do. So here we have another historical account of people from the stars or beings from out of this world visiting. It was drawn, right? What's the, the they, hieroglyphics were? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of cuneiform esque in the sense that cuneiform's written with like well, I, the prototypes of letters, but hieroglyphs is but just there pictures. Were also, there were also like drawings. Yeah. There's a lot of art depicting yeah. visitation and you know, gifting otherworldly beings. You see like the spliced head of an animal with a human oh, yeah. body, all yep. that. Same as Sumerian stuff. Same shit, frankly. It's kind of, it's, it's starting to paint this picture where mm -hmm. it's like, ugh, it's kind of weird. But again, having a hunch or having some circumstantial like similarities is not evidence. So we have to move forward. And then there's this one book that just clears it all up. And, uh, it's called the Bible. 
And luckily, uh, that one gives us all the alien proof that we need. Um, I was a youth ex- pastor for three weeks. I can tell you it's nothing but aliens. You don't have to. <laughs> Day one. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's weird. The Bible's a story where otherworldly beings come down to Earth and create humanity. <laughs> so, <laughs> oops. We have this, like, another one of those versions, right? Um, and, and there are accounts in the Bible, Old Testament and New. I'm going to focus on a couple Old Testament ones. We know Genesis. Uh, and if you don't, it's really accessible. Go read it. An otherworldly being comes and creates the earth and human. But there's even more, like, interesting ones. And in, in, a, in an Old Testament story called Isaiah, there's this uh, quote about... Um, how different races uh i'll just quote it quote they uh, in isaiah 13 5 open your bibles um <laughs> they they come from faraway lands from the ends of the heavens the lord and the weapons of his wrath talking about well to destroy the whole country so this is talking about judgment visited on people from what you know beings from beings potential this is inference beings from the ends of the heavens. But let's, let's take a less esoteric one and a more direct one, a direct quote from the same prophet here. So later in the Isaiah story, 45, 12, he's talking about um, the Lord, the creator of humankind, sort of like those other stories, and says, quote, it is I who made the earth and created mankind on it. My own hands stretched out the heavens. I marshaled their starry hosts. <sighs> okay, not uh, I know. Don't fall asleep on me yet. This is getting studious, but we have direct claim again that a person made humans on Earth and that they were from the ends of the heavens to do so. Is this the same fucking story <laughs> over and over and over again? Right. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to not draw a common link. And you have like the same book, the Bible, towards the end here in Revelation, mentioning all these crazy aerial, you know, carriages, flaming carriages. And yeah, but Paul wrote that when he was on acid. Revelations is full of all kinds of wild shit, (laughs) right? I I hear you, I hear you. Um, but these tell that to the guy on Ancient Aliens on the History Channel. Because he's made a life out of it, out of saying like, well, that definitely means I mean, there's, that an, maybe. there's an important like um, historiographical point to be made that if you keep seeing the same thing showing up again and again, you have to ask yourself the question, is it because people are seeing the same thing or because now there is a like what we would call it now is a meme? Is there is it just a story that's gotten out there that people are telling to each other? And now people are retelling the same story, not because they've witnessed it themselves, but because this is now like a way of thinking about something or a way of describing a certain phenomena that people have gotten into. So, yep. Yeah, there's a a historian. That's a point to make. Fantastic. Uh, Quick, quick jump there. There's another passage uh, in the Bible that's not about aliens. It's about honey. And to your point about like wisdom or uh, seeing the same thing passed down. It's like if you see a jar of honey careful and only eat a small amount because if you eat too much you know you'll get sick and basically trip out because they knew after a long time of being in the same place that everyone just knew can't eat that honey because it's made in a certain type of bush and it would you know too much of it make you sick and in the same way like people are passing down all of their knowledge through oral tradition including how did we get here including who built that big thing that we may have just not known so that's the kind of line that I'm building, right? That's kind of where I'm coming from here. There's just no evidence of, like, where's the proof? Where's the beef? We have the tablets, we have the Bible, we have, you know, like, all these other stories, but there's no, like, aliens that you can point to or other worldly beings that we have pieces of to yeah, tell the tale. Like, yeah, and it's just uh, it's stories. Like you have, you have people citing things. You have people saying that you know their their experience when they 
see something, whether it's by themselves or with someone else, like you saw that, right? Yeah, I saw that. What was that? Uh, kind of like when two mountain climbers are climbing up a mountain, there's all, all of a sudden a third climber that isn't really there. What? That happens. Oh, like a sense, they get a sense of someone else being there? Yeah. Yeah. It's mm. like, you see that? Yeah, I saw that. So it's like when you see your UFO sighting or whatever, they have these, or you don't even have to see it. There have been stories about people getting a sensation of being um, invaded. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Beach you talk about probing. Yeah, like there's a whole lot of that. People just being at in, in their homes and them having visions of beings that are uh, translucent or uh, like there's there's <laughs> there's one story about this this woman. She was just in her home and she felt like something went up her spine and then gave her a vision of uh, these beings. Uh, and, and they had a child like this. They were offering up this child. Uh, and it, she said like it made her it made her think of like the coming of Jesus. Oh, I thought you were going to say it made uh, her pregnant. No. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, you went to the bar that night. <laughs> or, or they uh, would have visions of this really big room inside of a, a UFO. And um, it's just okay. different different accounts. Like, my, my point is stories that are, are coming from the mouth of humans. A shared experience with someone or whether it's by themselves. You saw that, right? Yeah, I saw that. What was that? Yeah, Molly, I think you're making a cool counter lever point, which is like you have shared experience. You have groups entire dude. There's there's this British group of people who thinks that UFOs and Jesus team up to I wish I remember the name, but my research led me to some places, you guys. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what word. I mean is that, that you know what I'm talking yeah. about. They're on the cliff and they're chanting for an entire day and they speak to a weird box in the middle of the group. You guys. But OK. Point being, I'm not disparaging belief system. I'm saying this. I come from an evidence-based per perspective, and we just don't have that av available evidence, at least not publicly. So you have to get into the fringe if you're going to assert that for sure UFOs means aliens. What's up, Scott? Um, in terms of shared experiences, it's actually really weird. I haven't told anyone about this today. Um, oh my god! It's happening to me today it has nothing to do with aliens, but it has to do with a shared experience. Um, as me and my son were walking into the house today after being out, and uh, as we're walking in, I heard a dog make this noise, <laughs> and he was probably about ten feet away. I turned around. There's no dog. I look over at my son, who's also looking, and he goes, "Do you hear that dog?" And I go, "Yeah." We started looking for the dog. Found no dog. So we both just walked inside and went, well, we're never talking about that again. <laughs> uh, you know, so, you know, and the evidence person in me, like you're saying, Vinny, is like, uh, there was no dog. We both just, we just both have carbon monoxide poisoning, I guess. And uh, we're going to move on from that now. <laughs> you know? Oh, my God. But it can happen because Nick, when we, now I'm going to go out and spout everywhere. I was like, there's a ghost <clears throat> dog living on my street. You, you know? should get a monoxide detector for your home. They're safe and affordable. Um, this leads me to a good point about the next uh, shared experience we're going to discuss. So thank you guys for that. It's Roswell. I know that's on the tip of your tongue, right? It's UFOs plus aliens put together. So that's the point in history where most of us uh, go like, yep, we nailed it. We got aliens, right? So let's talk about the shared experience of Roswell. Can you guys tell me what happened at Roswell? You do the work this time. There's seven different stories of what yeah, I was going to say. Roswell. Which story do you want? Oh, but wait, we don't have one unified explanation. It's almost I mean, just like a fucking Pentagon report. It's like I mean, the I've documented seen... story. And then there's the, you know, the one that truth. supposedly happened. Yeah. 
Yeah, we have a we have a really divisive narrative here with a, a non singular. We don't have a singular conclusion. So here's uh, this thing rearing its head: the dramatic versus the realistic. And 1947, you have a crash in Roswell, New Mexico, of something that was flying. We didn't know what it was, and it was an object. So they settled on calling it a UFO. Um. And it falls down into the desert. Some people see it. And when they recover it after it being called in and stuff, the newly um, minted, not newly minted, sorry, but uh, they're, they're like starting their own projects now as the United States Army Air Forces. I think that's what they were called, USAAF back then. Um, and they're running a top secret project called Mogul. Project Mogul was all about an early warning system that used aerial devices, uh, basically bouncing radar signals off of them for target detection and threat detection. Because I don't know if you know this, guys, but there was a lot of nukes in the air in the late 40s because somebody started fucking using them. (laughs) Anyway, Mogul gets set up as a project that the government's like, hey, we, we need to try and detect these things, you know? for when they're in our airspace. Well, one of those systems, these proprietary experimental systems, goes down over the desert, and that's the cause of Roswell. If you believe the government, man. I mean, I sound like you guys all totally believe the government. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, I believe the government. (laughs) Yeah, I don't want to get too deep into it, but what a lot of people did, Matt, is they did not believe the government i've heard um, that some people newspapers who had stories to sell and a boring day in the desert people who wanted to draw attention to something that was you know uh pretty exciting and and mysterious started um using an interesting term to describe what they saw which was a flying disc so one of the ranchers who observed the the object falling said it looked like a flying disc well Hard to say. The material is really reflective on these devices. Um, it was aluminum and vinyl, and they were designed in really interesting ways to like attach to balloons as well. Um, and the base of the device looked a lot like kind of a uh, polygon or a disc. So you could say that, especially if it was falling apart in midair. It might be hard to, to see its original shape. But at the crash site, the materials were pretty evident. Vinyl, rubber, aluminum, sticks. Um, this was a military device. And interestingly, guys, talking about shared experiences, everyone remembers Roswell for alien bodies, right? You guys remember that? Mysterious device crashes and they, they find the body and all this stuff. So, no, actually. In 47, when it happened, nobody reports an alien body. That doesn't find its way into the, the narrative until the 80s, where you see like anecdotal accounts from people being like, oh, yeah, my grandpa he was there, man. He saw that shit. That's, there's aliens right there. To, sure. And that's one of the reports that I saw was like them talking about is like my uh, uncle or grandpa was there and he got parts of the spacecraft and it had like this kind of like aluminum foil that if you scrunched it up, it would uh, come back open again, kind of like, uh, I don't know, a bag of Lay's potato chips. And, uh, and actually, uh, he brought the alien in there, and I was talking to the alien. He was teaching me how to play David Bowie songs. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> you so, know, so it's, I was like, oh, okay, well, let's, cool. Yeah. The, the Which, if, if true, this. could you imagine how easy that is to go, well, that's just fucking nonsense. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah. It's a lot like, it's a like, it's the same thing of like, okay, well, uh, you know, I got abducted. Is a, is a pop, like you you hear this a lot in the research and but guys I encountered that a lot too of like I was abducted and so what well, here's an interesting thing you most people that were abducted were asleep or waking up when it happened which <laughs> reminds me a lot of dreaming like you have these real world explanations for these crazy experiences people have but they like to associate them with other mysteries. Right, we have mm-hmm. these origin stories of humans were associated with mysteries that we couldn't explain. How do you think we're gonna 
deal with these incidents on like the micro level. We're still going to do that. We're still going <laughs> to we're still going to put things together that might not belong. Um, so highlight, and this is a name that'll come back a little later. There's a guy named Joseph W. Kittinger Jr. He's a high altitude balloon tester for at what, what at the time was the USAAF, now known as the Air Force. And uh, he was the guy that um, was eventually going to be in those things that people saw falling in Roswell, which was these um, bailout balloons, test dropping, seeing what human bodies were going to respond to in the event that they fell out of these um, high altitude craft. So let's talk about little gray men, right? That's the people that fell out of the UFOs, guys, right? We're almost there. Dude, I'm just imagining um, some guy, by the way, who's a balloon tester sitting at a party and somebody's like, what do you do for a living, man? And he's like, <laughs> I work on balloons. <laughs> it's a real cool job. <laughs> she just stuck in a real balloon. <laughs> That's amazing. It's, I've just, I've got him sitting off on the side, man. You never know. You never know <laughs> when you may need it. That explains so much about why you want aliens to be real. <laughs> <laughs> Scott's just in his cave sucking helium like, they're coming, man. <laughs> One of these days, they're coming. <laughs> Look to the skies. <laughs> so what, what these guys in Roswell claim that they saw falling out of the spacecraft, I'm doing air quotes, was a crash test dummy who, who were designed uh, in the shape of man, right? by their creator the air force and strapped into these devices and when their bodies fall it looks like human bodies but they were also gray because who's going to paint a dummy um with the military budget they had back then this was not that amazing so there as a new branch ties into though if you consider i mean if does everyone remember the lost tribe of the airplane Uh, yeah the first time they saw uh what wait what (laughs) So there's a there's a tribe that for you know I think they fucking Tom Hanks was in a movie about it or some shit I don't know maybe that's Castaway and I'm mixing them up but it doesn't matter point is is that there was this tribe that had no human contact this plane comes in uh and you know parks in their for general area and they're like they are the gods they <laughs> came from the sky you know it's happened numerous times in human history like in World War II um the expansion of U.S. bases out in the Pacific spawned what was called the cargo cults. And um, a lot of isolated islanders that had never seen modern technology and stuff, they saw that the Americans came and they built airfields. And then when they built the airfields, like planes would come in with all this cargo, like food and, you know, guns and steel knives and all this stuff that they'd never seen before. So when the Americans left and all the cargo stopped coming, they would like build like mock airstrips and stuff on the assumption oh. that that would make a plane come and bring them cargo. Oh, yeah. okay. What a letdown. Yeah. yeah. It didn't happen that way, unfortunately. <laughs> but then the, yeah, then the cargo came, right? <laughs> no. And they all had to move because we dropped a nuke on their island. <laughs> oh, well, I said, I like, there's videos of those people that are out there that were making those mock airships, just sitting there looking at me, looking like me when I was in the outfield of my baseball games, going, Dad's going to be here any minute. I know it. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's fine. Sorry, I'm over it. It's fine. Well, I'm sure he'll be right back. After games he, gets... a year, it's fine. he just needs to get those cigarettes, dude. He'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I you think you guys get where my verdict is going to go, right? Um, Roswell is not aliens. I hate to let anybody down who still thinks so. You're going to um, get so much hate in the comments. But don't blame me. Okay. There was a new, new Mexico congressman. His name's Stephen Schiff. And in 1994, he commissioned with some help from others, uh, what's called the Roswell report where the U S government air force, all these different people teamed up and got together and put together 800 page published report that said, sorry, it's not aliens. Um, some things we can't tell you because we're the government, but it's not alien. And um, later on, um, Joseph W. Kittinger Jr. would be a famous high altitude balloon tester, and he would be the guy that they would eventually strap into, he, among many others, of course, would strap into these balloons and do high altitude bailout tests, which were the same thing that this Roswell thing uh, was kind of 
being based on, right? That and balloon radar targets. And guys, a lot of military devices get confused for uh, UFO slash alien craft, and they get conflated into the idea because they are weird. They're different. Like you're not used to seeing a weather balloon unless you were in the meeting where somebody was explaining what a weather balloon is. Um, so you'd say it's unidentified, therefore it might not be from this world. So it's easy if you come up in a culture that believes that, you know, people show up from the sky in crazy ships and make people. So it's an easy leap, I think, for people's logic. Um, yeah, there's more on this, though. There's the Wright Pet Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, uh, which I want to spend a little bit of time on because there, there's this uh, alien believer theory, UFO slash alien conflation called the Hangar 18 theory. You guys aware of this? Vaguely. Yeah. Yes, no. All right. No, Molly's not saying anything. So Molly's the spy on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Um, so yeah, there's this event that happened in, in 1978, chronologically moving us closer to today. We're going to end it right back on that report in 2021, but we got to stop in 78 in a place called Fort Dix, New Jersey. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh he for the, that's he where the nation's that. strategic dick reserve is kept. Alien dicks. Go, go, go. <laughs> So a lot of alien believers are drawn to a story of, of Fort Dix in 1978. There's a, a, a book called Strange Craft, the true story of an Air Force intelligence offers. And ah, shit. There's a book called Strange Craft, <laughs> the true story of an Air Force intelligence officer's life. And it came out in 2019 and it, and it focuses on this story. And it's by a guy named George Filer III, or rather it's about George Filer III, right? And he worked on a nearby military base. And he tells you guys the story of on a misty night, 2 a.m., 1978, January. Uh, it's 0200, and a strange low-flying aircraft's been spotted outside of Fort Dix. So they send an MP out in a Jeep, right, to, to check it out. This is fucking red flag number one. Solo MP right. in the Jeep. <laughs> I'm not in the Army. But you don't send one person pretty, to do anything. I'm pretty sure you send more than one. Anyway, so the story goes that on this like winding, foggy road at 2 a.m., the low flying object is spotted when the MP discovers the craft hovering directly above his own vehicle. Strange blue lights surrounding him. Start to sound familiar. Um, he gets out of his patrol jeep to check it out, and as soon as he leaves his jeep, he sees a small being step out from the side of the road, and then lights it up with a forty-five caliber <laughs> sidearm military Dix. issue. Of course and he does. One, yeah. Oh yeah. M nineteen eleven. He just blasts it. Five shots go in, and apparently, um, the alien flees from there, or the unidentified individual. Sorry, we'll get to alien later. Flees from there, right? Uh, and winds up on the airfield of another nearby base. Um, pull the nearby base name up. I might not have it. But it goes to the nearest military base Fort and finds balls. itself on the airfield there. <laughs> That's the one. Thank you. Anyway, this guy who <laughs> allegedly responded to the uh, incident, his name's George Filer. And he tells the story of uh, top secret airmen from Wright Patterson Air Force Base were deployed to the scene, Fort Dix, to retrieve the remains of this being, right? And wrote a book about it. And in the book, he's talking about how all the officers were intimidated into silence. All the other people were, were either paid or, you know, uh, bullied into saying anything, except for me. And you to can me, use the just, word hero. But it just kind of be, I'm, yeah. I'm a goddamn Maybe. hero. Think about it. Yeah. So I think what happened here is there was probably, and events do coincide with um, mysterious low flying craft on the dates and times and the range that the individual is discussing. And yes, there are secret hangars in many Air Force bases because, hey, uh, heads up, 
that shit's not for you and me. Right. I just want to put that out there. It's not like we should have access to the Air Force Base either. But anyway, um, these were swiftly batted down. And by, you know, multiple uh, military uh, branches and experts and government officials, no one would claim, no one would agree with Filer's claim. Um, and here is uh, another case where um, you have a guy claiming a conflation between a UFO, because the initial report is listed, and it's an unidentified object flying low. We don't know what it was. But then a guy kind of latched onto that story, made some money. You know what I mean? Got some people to believe that it was aliens. But the Air Force and pretty much everyone else agrees that it's an obvious hoax. So the story's not legit. Um, unfortunate, because a lot of people base the sort of uh, common experience of the alien encounter as what? You're driving alone on a, on a dark road at 2 in the morning, and then strange craft you know, hovers over you. And I was caught in a, in a light. And then the aliens were there, you know? Yeah, you know, it's, it's not not true when they did. Okay. Grays. Everyone describes grays as being, like, small. When you say grays, what do you mean? The grays. What, well, if, so, if I'm listening to this and I don't know it, but what's a gray? Alien. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so one, one, one species of aliens is the grays. There's, there are multiple. Uh, strains of alien. If this and... helps, I, uh, and I, I apologize for interrupting, I've never heard the term grays, but immediately in my head went, oh, oh yeah, okay, I can see it. Big eyes, bald head. Right. Yeah, it's the little ones with the big ass heads, gray, right? Gray. The big black eyes. Yeah. Well, you know, you know it isn't true because grays, grays are, are bigger than you think they are. Grays, grays are tall and, and strong. Uh, I'll mix them up with the little green men. I think. Yeah, so yeah, little green men. I always thought they were like the men in black. Wait, is that a different? Well, they have the small gray with like human esque eyes at the, uh, you know, sorry to spoil this for you if you haven't seen it. Uh, that was inside the, you know, the one thing of the, the galaxies in Orion's belt. Uh, that guy behind the head. Green and yes. Belt. Okay, mm -hmm. that would be like, uh, yeah, generally considered, I, I guess, now that I've learned the terminology of super small gray, but that's not the traditional form of, or at least not the scale of which that we're used to in traditional media. I should have put a slideshow up on the Discord somehow. There are so many great, like, uh, crime scene depictions, sketches of aliens that people tried to, you know, put together. Mm -hmm. There's like, they all look so vaguely humanoid. And that's a that's a thing that could get into in another episode, maybe, because I don't want to go too long on this. Like, I want to I want to stay pretty close, but I have a couple more tiny like claims to obliterate. UIS destroys UFO lives, but like <laughs> it's 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 gonna do. I got two more, so <clears throat> I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation. But Oumuamua was a first known, our first known interstellar object, 2017 bunch of telescopes and space observers uh molly calls them space cameras uh and our ground cameras which look into space saw this crazy cylindrical asteroid space dildo but not it didn't behave like an asteroid and it didn't tumble like a normal asteroid and the shape was so strange and you can look it up if you want like 2017 I actually have looked that one up. It's yeah very cylindrical ah it's debatable. So, like, there's these two. There's, first of all, there's already debated debates on the shape. Some people say it's a flat pancake by the observation, and some people are stuck on like the cylinder. But the the idea of this object that stirs curiosity is that it clearly came from out of this solar system, and and that that's from the observable instruments we use to measure this kind of crazy shit. Uh, they named it. Oumuamua, which means in uh, the Hawaiian tradition language, I think, scout from a distant past, or there's some other translations. Um, but here's the controversy. It came in, and then it whipped around in an orbit that a lot of people are saying is not natural. An asteroid would, would behave a certain way, um, observed through our, obser excuse me, our observations. But what 
So the theories edged out to be the latest understandings, excuse me, that I saw were it's made of a material, according to the people who study space, it's made of a material that allows it to travel in a different kind of way. And it, the, the way that sun rays burn the sort of, um, I think, nitrogen that it's made of or hydrogen, some crazy space material, uh, being in the area of the sun burned the object in such a way that it propelled it through space. Now, look, I'm too dumb to understand that. But here's what it didn't do. Land on Earth and shoot up the White House. So I'm <laughs> not. Ack, ack. I'm not. Yeah, it didn't do a Mars attack. It didn't do a it didn't do an invasion. So I'm not buying aliens. But if you look online, you're going to see a lot of people just straight claiming that because it had its particular flight path, which was anomalous, uh, you might even call it unidentified, as a flying object goes, that it must be piloted by an alien. But here's the thing. It is alien. The word alien, deriving its meaning from not being from around these parts. It was. It just came from a different solar system. It doesn't mean it was being piloted by green guys or gray guys or any of that crazy shit. Um, but it's on a trajectory out of this solar system. And by like 2050, it might not be here anymore to observe. So people are going to check back in on that, I'm sure. Um, we might get more info about it. But we've been through so many examples in this episode of claims linking UFOs to mysteries we don't understand, but we still lack the evidence to support any encounters provable with alien life. So that's my bottom line. The jury's out. And UFOs, they're real. Aliens, show me one. Well, I'm glad that you asked. <laughs> oh, no, no, or did because they? I have I have my story about not UFOs, but about aliens. Okay, tell me. I want to know. And, and I'm glad to tell the story because it will. I, I will then find out whether or not my mother watches the podcast. Uh, I had a cat named Smokey. Okay, and uh, when I was about 16 or 17, my mother says to me, she comes to me and she goes, "I'm going to need to talk to you, and I need you to treat me." like you at least believe or know that I believe what I'm saying. I go, okay. <laughs> last night I was laying in bed and Smokey walked into the living room, looked out the front window and started going bop, bop, be bop, bop, be bop, 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 be bop, 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 be bop, bop. And then it, then, then she would stop talking. And then a few seconds later, go bop, bop, beep, bop. <laughs> and then <laughs> continued. And she goes, I was frozen. And I could not. I could, I'm like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go talk to her while she's talking to the fucking mothership. You know, <laughs> I just laid there. And then eventually she walked away. And I just <laughs> didn't sleep for the rest of the night for the most part. Ooh. So I, being a scientist at heart, said, all right gonna test this i didn't stay in my room that night the next night i went to the living room which is adjacent to my mother's room and i decided that i was not going to go to sleep that night that i was going to lay in bed lay there but not actually fall asleep i want to tell you guys something that happened that night mm -hmm. i'm laying there and i've got my eyes kind of semi-closed and i'm watching the cat the cat walks into the living room looks up at the window same way my mom said it did. And then I hear. Bop, bop, be bop, bop, be bop, bop, bop. <laughs> oh, no. And I am terrified before also hearing. <laughs> bop, bop, be, bop, bop. My mother is talking in her <laughs> sleep in the other room. Shut the fuck up. Oh, no. That is a 100% true story. And whenever something now comes up where my mom's like, I swear there was like a, I, there, I could have swore there was an ice cream truck or whatever, whatever it is, I'll look at her and I'll go, well, mom, bop, bop, be bop, bop. <laughs> <laughs> so. The power of shared experience. Oh, I couldn't have <laughs> dovetailed better here. Yeah. Any, do you guys have, so well, this is open for. Also, yeah. before you continue, Final I want to say, uh, eep, op, orp, op, op. That means I love you. 
<laughs> uh, you know, I'll, I'll let her know. That cat that was, likes lamp or that was that was a Jetsons reference. Um, oh, the closest I got, the closest I got to embracing alien life is the SETI project. I I support these kind of initiatives. This Carl Sagan homage of of look into the sky and imagine in an infinite world that that we're not alone. Uh, we of course we're not alone. It, in my opinion, right in a universe with infinite potential, it would it would be silly. Um, but until we get like a photo or like I can like meet an interstellar being, um, I'm gonna back off on the idea. Yeah, what our sci-fi. Does. Who knows though? Maybe the next time they visit, I'll make I'll be writing the stone tablet. I mean, like the the numbers say that there has to be life elsewhere, in probably intelligent life elsewhere in the universe, but. <clears throat> The numbers also say that, like, in let, barring a technological leap that we don't understand, which, granted, there's probably a ton of those, that it's extremely unlikely that they would be close enough to us that we would ever make contact. Yep, yeah. so that's my notes. That's the branch. My conclusion, if there are aliens, we've either made contact, but it's been covered up by the government, which is oh, so problematic, or more likely, we just have not. Yeah. Yeah, and with that governmental release of the documents and the video. Oh, like, yeah. Um, there was a, <laughs> uh, I think his name is an astrophysicist, um, or at least now he's a contractor. I don't remember. I'm not entirely certain, but uh, the, the name Erica W. Davis pops to mind, who says that he, you know, um, he's at least well reputed, has a job that, uh, you know, a subcontractor for an aeronautics or, you know, an aerospace type of uh, company. Um, Damn, Baylor U. claims it claims that he uh, that they had discovered uh, crafts that were out of this world, and he's since done like press things talking about yes, we found crafts. They were definitely uh, things. It was using technology that was well beyond the means of human technology, leaps and bounds ahead, um, and talks about uh, the types of technology that he thinks that. Uh, we as humanity should invest in. And it's funny because I'm listening to these and I would say 90% of them have merit as potentialities for some form of, of travel. But, you know, as, as kind of Matt said, it's the question is, is traveling a distance that it would probably be required for us to actually find life. It would be insanely lucky to be close enough. And then it would be unfeasible in a lifetime for, for us to go, you know, I think the last estimate that I found of like a habitable planet would take like 42,000 years, or even if it only takes 10,000 years, you're looking at the en entire written record of all of human history plus 4,000 right. years. Right. Uh, yeah. And yeah. If you believe eight in space and that's why so many, like, I don't know, like science fiction settings, like the miracle you need to hold it together is like some sort of like, faster than light travel, right? Like you've got to have warp speed or wormholes or hyperspeed or something like that, or else the whole thing just doesn't work. Like, well, you just do, you just, you got to set up the Giza pyramid the right way and you right. just fold up space and you get back to Jupiter, dude. I, and it's not I to know. say that that stuff is impossible. I mean, we don't know. There's so much shit that's possible that we don't know, but <laughs> it's true. There is a whole lot of theoretical, but the problem becomes, knowing where the destination of what you're messing with space and time is. I don't know if anyone's played Portal before. <laughs> uh, I think one I think one of the pyramids is leaving right now. Um, the uh, I don't know if you guys have ever played Portal before, but there is one portion where you send one port, you know, you, you, you send a portal to uh, the moon and another one on Earth and it completely the atmospheric pressure differences is so astronomically insane that everything's getting pulled through. God forbid we open up a wormhole next to a giant planet or something uh, that is all consuming. It doesn't take a whole lot before uh, everything is death. So yeah, we would need massive <laughs> amounts of uh, we need a massive amounts of uh, awareness on where wormholes would open. It's highly risky uh, as well. So I tend to fall into that same category that you guys are falling into, which is mm, unlikely, but maybe. Join us next time for astrophysics on uninformed summary. I apologize for going into all that kind of stuff, but I mean, there is some, oh, serious, dude, not at all. some serious concerns about that type of travel. That's a, that's a so. legit suggestion. I know uh, 
a little behind the scenes, we've even talked about all this different uh, space stuff we're, we're going to get into down the line. But yeah, um, I have tons of sources. I'm not even going to try. You know, I, I think we like to shout them out here. Um, but big time, big time source, uh, <laughs> the Sumerian tablets, just want to shout out. I'm, shout out. <laughs> I stole them from the Smithsonian or wherever. And, uh, <laughs> have them now. And I'm willing to ransom them off for enough crypto to make me richer than Bezos. Um, Congratulations. <laughs> you uh, did it. <laughs> the, the Roswell reports was an interesting read. Thanks to the Department of Defense and National uh, Intelligence for this preliminary assessment they put out in June. Uh, so many more. We'll, I'll just drop them in the comments. Don't forget to smash that like button, baby. <laughs> What yeah. about that shit that went down in Brazil? Oh, yeah. Join us 71. for another. We'll do a short story. There was uh, something in May that happened in 2020 yeah. that was like a really scandalous um, military engagement purported to have happened between a UAP or UFO, whatever you want to call it, uh, in, in a place called Maje, Brazil, outside of a, you guessed it, military base. Um, but details are too scant and i i think we'd go too far over time to get into that fine yeah maybe join us next time for um me being kidnapped by the government for talking about ufos and to be honest with you there's there's so much information out there it's possible we could do a part two to this so i i would i would love to you hang out with me i'll talk about ufos all day any day um, you know, I don't, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not a believer, but maybe I can be turned. Hmm. Well, with all that said, that has been another episode of uninformed summary. Don't forget to you, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to like, and subscribe. You can follow, uh, Matt at natural 20. You can follow Molly at Mallswald. You can follow me at that one loud guy. And you can follow Vinny at, uh, what was that physicist name? Oh, you can uh, follow me at Mulder Scully. There you go. There you go. Um, so yeah, uh, once again, website's up. We're going to be posting everything to the website. I still have some more changes I want to make to that in terms of uh, making us a little bit more uh, available in any platform that you may choose to listen to us. Also, make certain to tell your friends. Tell my mom. I don't think she's been listening. Uh, <laughs> so if you know her, please let her know. I'm, I'm working on something. Also, you just put the two agents of X Files names together. No, Mulder Scully's the guy from X Files. It's not. He's the one who's like. There's Agent Mulder and there's Agent Scully. He's like. Well, the aliens came down and spliced them together. Mulder's the one. You guys, I remember. He's the one. the one who got experimented on. And then Scully's like, "You're fucking crazy." No, Mulder's the no, one who... Scully's the one who got impregnated by the aliens, and then... So I hope that this anyway, has made everyone a little less uninformed. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it's a never-ending debate. Thanks, everybody. I'm never going to talk about this Thanks. again. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>he showed up and did a couple okay episodes. Like, that was pretty much it. I like your episode. And every time he fucked up, he was like, Scott will get it in editing. <laughs> and, and he's you're on the TED Talk stage with, like, like a hologram microphone, and you and flash to that, and you're like, you know what? I did. I got it in editing. And that's why I'm here to promote my new product, the Neuro Edit, which catches your mistakes before you. <gasps> that's right. Make them. Even if your cast is trash, your podcast will be great. <laughs>